Well, good morning. Today is the 26th of July, 2023, and we are here at the LCCA convention in Concord, North Carolina. We're actually en route to go to the lineup headquarters and warehouse tour. So stick around, and I guess we're all going to see what's inside. Super excited. Holy cow, we're really here. They're not connected to the rest of Holy cow. We're really here. I mean, I'm sure somewhere down the bloodline, but. Hi. Good morning. William. Morning. Nice to meet right. you. Wade, nice to meet you. Hey, good morning. Good morning. Get everybody off the bus here. I want to find out if we've got two more getting rushed over separately or if they're just going to catch them for next tour. Don't worry, I will make it work. And then we'll get everybody started. Try and get you out of this humidity here pretty quick. Uh, welcome you to Lionel headquarters uh, and our, our family here. Uh, for those who haven't met me yet, uh, my name's Ryan. I'm the director of project management here. I'm responsible for building up the catalog with the help of uh, my great team, uh, one of whom, uh, Sandy. She'll be the caboose on this on this train today. <laughs> Sandy is our uh, production assistant. She dots all her I's, cross all her T's, makes sure everything's in line, and, and does so many things. Uh, products that you get wouldn't be anywhere near as great without without her and her help. Uh, she has the hardest job here. It's keeping me in, in line and in check. So, uh, and proofreading all my mistakes. So it's a, that's a full time job in and of itself. Uh, we're going to start on in the building here. We're going to be taking a walk through most of the building. Uh, you'll get a, get quite a few steps in here today. Um, so the most important a couple of announcements here. Uh, first of all, photography, videography, any recording you want to do, feel free. Awesome. We, it's wide open. There's nothing off limits. Take pictures of, of anything you like. Uh, it is an open work day for us. So there's about 30 of us tied up with the tours, but the rest of the company's hard at work at their desks. Uh, when we're in the warehouse, be cautious. There will probably be forklifts moving about. We've roped off a course, but uh, there'll be things moving around. Uh, we ask you, please don't feed the artists while they're working at their table. Um, but we'll, we'll get you through here safe and sound. Most important thing, it's a big facility. We're going to walk past the bathrooms when we go in the door, uh, and that'll be probably the, the most convenient time for you. So if anybody feels the need for a potty break between now and roughly an hour and a half, two hours from now when we'll be done, this is your opportunity to, to grab one now without having to miss anything else on the tour. All right, that's enough of the stuff. Let's get on in out of the humidity and see some, some cool things. Thanks for coming. Morning, sir. Morning. Oh, like the shirt. Yeah. All right. Did you make that for him? Wow. Oh, it's like an old 773. I'm going to stop here and take pictures. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe these bathrooms are right here. If not, you'll just meet me right here in our big meeting room. Restrooms are here if you need them. Uh, and otherwise, you can just meet me right here to your right in the in the big room, and we'll get started there. Sir. These are big boys. All right. Oh, yeah. Look at those. <laughs> oh, then they're weathered. Have a green screen. Yes. So, this is uh, the room we're in here gathering what we call Collaboration Station, which is a really fancy name for multi purpose room. Uh, we do why. a lot of our product video shoots, oh, wow. um, social media things. I see Lenny the Lion. We've got one of the Lenny heads in here. Um, yeah, some of the props wander around. You'll probably see a skeleton or an alien head floating around the building somewhere. Who knows? The, the creative oh. team has tons of fun. 
Um, oh man, Ryan, I've been looking for one of those for probably two years because I I ordered two vision lines and I did not order the GS1. Holy cow! Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's all the props. Yeah. What was it? Polish Yeah, yeah. On your train trip? Hmm? On yours? <laughs> nope. I only use it. Uh, <laughs> 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 ping pong. We uh, we oh, recently held a ping pong yeah. um, tournament. So. Oh, so. Oh, oh wow. Like Great illustrations. Yeah. That looks like the testing track area. Oh wow. Wow. I got a couple of those. New York Central. How do you pick which ones you want? Oh, the side. The Baldwin centipedes, those are vision line. I think I may want to come north here. I might want to do the same. I'm actually trying to find a set of these. It came in an AA set. Oh, look at this bridge. It's a great way for when you have little space. Wow. I'll have to you, ma'am. I just some one of a kind here. Look at that. I'll yeah. show you how it makes the oh. bridge is beautiful. I don't think I've ever seen that catalog. You remind me of being back at encampment, man. Oh, the train table. Oh, look at the white ones. One of those, if you feel like going around the layout, uh, you've got a few more coming in, they, the, uh, in the doors so yet. Are those brass? Yeah, those are the brass. Look at that. That's the brass 90. That's the GS. And when did they do those? Oh, that just recently, within like the last, I'd say, 10 years. So, uh, welcome to Lionel, and uh, welcome to the engineering department. I am Dave. For those who don't know, I'm the director of engineering. Uh, we do primarily all of our engineering We're here out of this office. Uh, I'm the director of the engineering, but I'm also a mechanical engineer, so I work with our design centers uh, on the actual CAD design, mechanical design of our trains and other uh, products. Uh, we also have two software engineers. They work on the code for our trains, uh, things like the motor drivers, the smoke units, the lighting effects, and, and more. Uh, we have a hardware engineer uh, who does the circuit board designs of our trains, and then we have Tracy, our audio engineer over in the corner, who does all the sounds, uh, you know, bells and whistles and dialogue and all that fun stuff. Um, he gets to travel sometimes. His most recent trip was to Illinois to record the Frisco 1630 decapod that will be using the sounds uh, in this pr the latest production run. So Awesome. He gets to have fun while I sit here staring at a computer screen. You know how that goes. <laughs> um, so we have kind of two facets of engineering here. One is production engineering. So we will get what we call engineering prototypes or EPs, such as these two GP20s here and uh, we will run them through our speed testing to make sure we tune the speeds um, to match up the legacy standard table so that when you build a train or a lash up they all run the same speed and aren't fighting one another. Um, the guys will also pick the lighting packages to make sure all the lighting features are correct for the engine as well as tune the smoke units and then Tracy our audio engineer will take the engines and put the sound set in them and tune the sound sets because all of our engines have different speaker setups, speaker baffles, things like that, so it has to be tuned per engine. Um, when it comes to development of our engines and, and other products, um, like a typical simple legacy locomotive like the GP20 here can take about six months to develop from concept to when we ship over the code and um, audio to the factories for production. Um, up to two plus years for development of something like a Vision Big Boy or Vision Class A that's on the wall over there. Uh, one example I like to tell people about is the Vision Line uh, Niagara that we did in 2018. We developed the force coupler feature for that locomotive which was um, when it would detect a change in load on the drawbar, it would automatically adjust the labor sound effects and the smoke output. And, that feature took us a little over six months just by itself to develop. So wow. Some of these projects do take quite a bit of time and effort, um, but we love it, especially the new development stuff, which is our other facet of engineering, is new development and uh, new initiatives. Uh, the prime example of new development and new initiatives right now has been the Base 3, mm -hmm. uh, along with the Cab 3 app. And um, I'm actually going to be talking more about these um, this afternoon at the seminar with Ryan uh, when okay. we do our presentation. 
and we'll be taking questions then as well if you have questions on this or any uh, anything else really um, will be available then uh, but we get to have fun developing stuff um, you know not quite as complex as the base or engines um, you know one of our new developments has been the Billups crossing station there Ryan's radio volume and you know, <laughs> rocket launchers uh, stuff that's not traditional trains but is still really fun um, at the end of the day, everybody in this office just gets paid to play the trains. That's amazing. And that's really all that matters. So, um, Your next stop on the tour is going to be service. You're going to talk to Savati, who is our engineering tech, but also our service manager for the techs. And he'll teach you how we uh, repair the trains. Um, as you go that way, make sure you look in my cabinets right here that have prototypes from the last 10 years or so. Um, feel free to take any pictures you want. And other than that, I just want to thank everybody for coming out today, and I hope you have a really fun week. Uh, how will I know if I have interference? I call if you don't have control of your engine when it's in. No, you don't need it. You can have a generic whistle and he can make dozens of pitches and variations of it and the way he can manipulate sounds. We're going to move on to customer service next. So if you'll follow me back out this way, take a short walk. S2 or we what we call audio engineer sounds. That's the traffic inspection car. It's in the recent. I think it's in The next stop we're making is the repairs and service on that. I bought the train. Oh, Caboose is going to push you guys through. She's got a good I'm not a the big grand one. Yeah, we made it. Lionel made it. When? When? 2016. 16? 2016? Yeah. Wow. Trust yeah. Extended trust bridge. Extended trust bridge. Extended trust bridge. That's where we went from Pittsburgh to Chicago on the Pennsylvania River. Then you switched to Arlington. But what did you go there for? Yeah, Chicago. Oh, okay. Chicago was just a place to switch over. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's supposed to be over here. Ooh, look at that. I like that. I want it. Hi. All right. All right. Savati, they're all yours. Hello, everybody. My name is Savati Mai. I am the customer service repair manager. I want to welcome you all to the customer service department and all its glory. <laughs> uh, the service department currently consists of four technicians, each cross training a broad array of Lionel products to perform the necessary repairs. Uh, if you look around each station, each station is equipped with the necessary tools and equipment to perform the repairs. Uh, if you look towards the whiteboard, there's just a quick interpretation as far as how the uh, warranty process is set up. Uh, between you guys contacting talk to us getting a case number and already set up for the product you guys sending in the product technician grabs the product uh, performs the necessary repairs uh, gets tested and verified and sent back out to you guys in a timely manner I'd like to highlight a key step in the process um, which is the unboxing got a few samples here uh, sometimes we never know how a product's going to show up at a doorstep, so it's interesting to see how that happens. <laughs> it is. Uh, this was a legacy diesel sent in for repair, and the proper repair was done. But along with the item, somehow we was <coughs> blessed with a bottle of vinegar that was sent in. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> of all things, it's sealed and still good. At this point, we'll take anything you guys send us, you know, we'll put a bottle of scotch if anything. <laughs> we'll get your repairs done even quicker. If you have to declare that, you know. <laughs> but no one has to really know about that. <laughs> but on a more serious note, uh, this is another case that we received in. Uh, this was a veranda tender. 
that was sent in only wrapped in shop towels. So you can see the extensive wow. damage to the item. It's expensive, fragile. Just want to take the time to emphasize, please use the proper packaging when sending in product for repair. The original foam packaging in your orange box, if possible. If not, then you can always use the big old foam and roll foam wrap. <laughs> this much. <Okay. laughs> Don't skip on the packaging because shipping damage happens. You know, help us help you guys. Uh, we'll ensure that the product gets sent out there in one piece. Yeah. But you know, from here to there, you never know what happens. FedEx, UPS, post office, it happens. So we'd really appreciate that. Because it, it goes from like a, a 10 minute repair to like an hour repair, mm -hmm. like repair deco pieces, you know, so, and we might not have the item as well. So it's very critical in that part. All right. So if you guys will follow me, we'll go on to the next step of the process, which is the test track. Five wood stuff. Uh -huh. And that tells us if you've got this board, then you use that tester. So we can set it up here. Just test the board without putting it in the current uh, inbound. These are all people's trains that are here getting repaired and then to your front door. And then look at this test track. This is crazy. Look at how this is huge. Wow. We try to test all functionalities. Well, we can test all functionalities uh, command, Bluetooth, and conventional. And we check for mechanical movement issues, whether you got jerky motions or derailing on switches or cross sections, or even having issues pulling the weight up and down inclines. So we'll check for that. Uh, we have total four loops uh, 072, 060, and 054, and also a flyer track. On the smaller table at the far end, we, we also test 031, 036, and HO. After the condition of the to repair, it gets tested out here. We'll test low end engine for a good couple hours. High end engine will test a little bit longer because of the bells and whistles and things that go into that. And after it's all confirmed and good to go, it'll be test, packed up and shipped out back to you guys. So if a technician was to need a part, uh, they would go into the parts area, which is y'all's next stop, the parts department. Oh. My lord. Oh my gosh. This is the parts department. Holy cow. <laughs> um, we may have some. Aaron's the one to talk to about that. But not, it depends on what your definition of old is. People don't see this. Holy cow, look at all this. Seeing the tip of the iceberg so far. Really? Okay. How's everybody doing today? Great. 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 Enjoying the tour so far? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Excited to be here? Yes. 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 I've been telling groups I need your energy. It's been a, it's been a long week. I've been getting burnt out, so I'm feeding off your energy. Everybody get excited. All right. This is going to be the best part of the tour. Right? Right. Absolutely. It's the parts Absolutely. department. Yeah. Exactly. Just... Welcome to the parts warehouse. Yeah. So as you uh, glance down these aisles here, you can see, glance in one of these bins here just to give you a scope of what you're looking at. Any one of these bins might have a variety wow. of different parts in them. So as you glance down these aisles here, you can kind of get a scope of just how many parts you're truly looking at. <laughs> it's a lot. How old do you go back as far as parts? Roughly 10 years or so. Okay. Um, I'll cover that more in a minute. Um, so if you look at your fun fact sheet here, yeah. we have over 30,000 different parts yeah. with over 1 million parts of on-hand inventory. Wow. So it's quite a few. We fulfill over 10,000 customer parts orders a year as well. So everything we do is very manual. We create all the records. We manually enter all of the inventory. Of course, it does live in a database that don't have all of this memorized. The system will tell me where stuff is. Um, when we fulfill our parts orders, um, again, it's all very manual. We come out here, we handpick, package, label, ship. A lot of our electronics, we even program those specifically to order. All those different legacy engines all have different software, so we program them specifically to order. So it is very manual. It usually takes us a few days to fulfill an order. Aaron, you said you you fulfill those two orders. So, for instance, you build you program that particular board for that particular engine, given that order. Yes. Okay. Outstanding. So it does take us a few days. We're not Amazon. We don't ship next day. <laughs> I don't have that budget. 
no one besides Amazon has that budget. Um, so we appreciate everybody's patience. It does take us a few days to fulfill. Um, as you guys were walking in, you passed one of our rooms. Uh, we call that the teardown room. That's where we literally sit and we dissect some of our products, creating all the part records that we need, creating the parts listings that you might find. Has anybody used LionelSupport.com? And it was a good experience? Absolutely. Yeah. That is the correct answer. Yeah. 100%. <laughs> Looking forward to more support. So. That's correct. Uh, so we launched a new support site uh, last year. We're still in the process of cataloging all those items. Some of the newer engines might not be up there yet. Doesn't mean we don't have parts. Email us. Yep. We okay. might be able do to it. Uh, yeah. make that available for you. We're still, still, still a work in progress to get everything into the system, but our goal is to get all of those newer engines up on the site and available. Okay. So for those of you who are not familiar, it's LionelSupport.com. You can also go to lionel.com on the right hand top of the screen on every page there's a support, support icon if you click that it'll take you to the support site and that's how you find all of these parts everything we catalog is by product SKU. Mm -hmm. so if you're looking for a part the best way to do is identify the product SKU. if you don't know it it might be on the box it might be in your manual you can try typing in the engine type or maybe even the road number to help identify that or you can even contact us and we can probably help identify which one that it was so you can find a part should you need a part, not that our stuff ever breaks. So I also work with our project managers, such here as Ryan Kunkel here. This is the part of the tour where I give Ryan a hard time. So Ryan uh, <laughs> is one of our project managers. He comes up with all those fun products, all those legacy engines, all those fun features. He makes my life miserable as I have to try and come up with ordering all of the parts to service those wonderful products. Um, but I sit down with Ryan and all the other project managers, all those new products, we review it. We go through and we determine what parts do we need. Is it something that's existing? Is it something new based off order quantities? I'm submitting my requests to my orders to the factories at the same time we're submitting to build all of those trains. Okay. To make sure that we can service them and keep them running. Now, some of the common questions I've been getting, how old is your part inventory? Um, it's roughly 10 years or so. There's no hard cutoff, but it's, it's mostly the newer items. Now, some of the stuff we've been manufacturing for many years, so we might build a new product today, some of those parts might be backwards compatible to some of those older items. Mm -hmm. Some of them not. You know, a lot of electronics and stuff like that go obsolete. Um, another common question that I've been getting too is, do you throw any old parts away? No, <laughs> we don't. Um, so over the years, sometimes we do need to purge out some of that old inventory, make room for some of the newer inventory. And what we've done is we've sold some of that inventory off. Some of the secondhand part dealers that some of you might be familiar with. If you contact us looking for some of those older items and we don't have it, we have those list of references that we give out to check those part dealers or even some of these uh, dealers and service stations out there to help you with them out of warranty work if we, if we don't have something. So a lot of their part inventory, some of them got that parts from us. So we keep that stuff in the market so we can help you guys keep your trains running. I'm, uh, I think I'm out of time here. Before you move on, uh, just keep in mind the warehouse is operating. Forklifts are going. So for everybody's safety, stay with your tour group, stay on the guided path, enjoy the rest of your tour. Thanks for coming. Tell everybody this was your favorite section. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that energy up. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. This is all Lionel stuff. From accessories to locomotives to track to tr like transformers. <laughs> it does. Thank you. Most of what you're seeing in, in this, the knee lines here are train sets ready to run, ready to play train sets. We've also got uh, track here. We try and keep uh, items like track that we're cycling pretty quickly up here towards the front where it's faster to get to. As you get towards the back of the warehouse, uh, the bigger volume items or the slower moving items we, we keep back there. These are all line shift sets. Hundreds and hundreds. hundreds. No, no. No, the empty boxes are flat. These are all full of trains. This is a team effort. Joe Miller, Director of Operations here in the warehouse. Welcome to our space. Um, you're standing kind of in the middle of a 160,000 square foot facility. We're in the pack and shipping area at the moment, which kind of splits our docks up between our inbound and outbound dock. 
all of our product is received and put away or stored in these racking units. Uh, we currently have about 1.6 million pieces of individual inventory across the die cast and train side of the business. Uh, that's about 2,200 unique SKUs in-house. Uh, we carry a lot more train items than we do die cast. Uh, part of the reason is because the die cast is a cross dock process where once it's received in, it's pretty much pre-sold and goes right back out the door. So we don't really have to store a lot of that. You can kind of get a good visual by looking at the aisles. You can see our aisle markers up here for the name of the aisles, G1, G2, H1, H2. A1 starts all the way on the far end of the wall. A1 through C2 is die cast. Starting at D1, all the way across the entire rest of the warehouse is all the train. So that's kind of the split between the two. Uh, but everything starts over here on our inbound dock. This is where all of our containers uh, that are routed through Savannah, Georgia will deliver. They'll back up to one of these doors. Our team will unload. They actually unloaded a dock cast container this morning. So that's what this product is. They unloaded it, put it on the dock, sorted it, counted it, got it received in. Now they're in the process of putting it away. That product would be shipped back out. Train inventory would be put away for future orders. That kind of kicks off our order processing uh, as far as picking goes. So here's an example. This is a polo ready to play. It comes to us in a shipper box just like this already, uh, which means it can ship out just like this. We have a process called the combo level that batch fulfills and builds these orders. It generates a packing slip and a shipping label. All the picker has to do is go out to the bin, pull the product, apply the label, out the door it goes. It's good to go. When we have loose product, it'll have to be reboxed. We don't want to ship it like this. Um, the picker will log into their scan gun. It will direct them to the bin with the least amount of product in it. That way we can empty out bins and have more space for new product. They'll scan the bin when they get there. They'll scan the UPC on the product. They'll scan the order. If everything matches and it's the right item, It'll fulfill that order. It actually takes the inventory out of the system, marked it as picked, and it's brought over here. If for some reason they're in the wrong bin, they scan the wrong item, an error message will come up on the scanner. It'll tell them that something's wrong. They can correct it. So there, there are definitely QC steps built in. There's a similar process here in packing where when we have the loose items, the packer has a scannable barcode as well. They are making sure the barcode for the packing slip matches the product. So they're scanning both making sure it's correct before it ships out. Everything that's manually shipped is shipped right here at the shipping stations. UPS, FedEx, Postal Service, we ship it all right here. Um, so that kind of handles all the small package orders. Larger freight orders are staged over here on the outbound dock. That's what all these wrapped pallets are that you see. All that's product that was stored previously. It's been pulled. It's ready to ship now. Our shipping team works with the LTL carriers, full truckload carriers, to arrange pickups for all of that product, and it'll uh, ship out uh, on, a, on a daily basis as well. You can see a couple of our forklifts. Um, that's an order picker. Some, some guys call it a cherry picker. That allows the pickers to go down the aisles, up in the air, pull loose cartons, bring it over here. That's the kind of product that's staged over here for shipping. Full pallet loads are moved with the stand-up. That allows them to put away the full pallets, pull full pallets for bulk orders. And then the sit down, there's one uh, sitting right there. The sit down is used for loading and unloading trucks um, or the containers for the most part. All of our operators are forklift certified. They have an in-house OSHA program that we do here. There's a classroom they have to go through. Uh, there's a test they have to take. And then they have the own hands piece. Once they're certified, they get a badge that looks like this. This actually functions as the key to the forklift. This technology is called iWarehouse. Um, once they are certified on a piece of equipment, their information is put in a database and they'll have a badge with the chip on it like this. When they go to the forklift, the first thing they're going to do is scan into it. And then they have to answer a series of questions. Uh, are there any damages to the wheels, to the forks? Is your horn functioning properly? Things like that. We want to make sure it's in good operating condition before we use it. Once they verify all that, they can actually operate it. Nice thing about this too is if you're not certified, for example, on a stand-up and try to scan into it, it won't let you. It won't even turn the equipment on. It'll recognize you as an unauthorized user. It won't do anything. Uh, the other thing it does is uh, register impacts. So if you were to hit an upright or run into a column, <laughs> it'll shut the equipment off. <laughs> I'll get a text message immediately. I'll mm -hmm. come running out of my office to find out what happened. 
and then we'll go from there. But usually it's a, a nice piece of preventative technology to help with safety. We, we try to build safety into everything we do out here. So uh, that's a big piece of what we do at the Fort Lives. But um, we currently have 14 full-time associates in the warehouse. We more than double that staff for peak season. We bring on seasonal labor to help with containers. They help pick, pack, ship. Same way with our office guys. They're always a huge help. Come out and do anything that it takes to make sure we have a nice, smooth season for, uh, for Christmas. That's what it's all about, this back half of the year. So. Questions? Different product and, and how it goes in the packages. Give you a bit of sense of some of the different things that uh, the warehouse is up against. Brian, I have an obtuse question for you. Sure. I know you said you only joined them recently. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know how many years ago it was that uh, I think she came by now to make our reach product. Mm -hmm. And uh, evidently, of course, a war that empties at the $40 million dollar. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is the what if paint scheme chessies and there's just a whole pallet of them. That's insane. Like those are just all green briars. That's awesome. Holy cow. Oh, there's more green briars here. That's awesome. Yeah, this is our, our paint booth here where we've done some paint in the past. We're from time to time for things. Come on into the production room, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, How's ladies. Doing? doing very well. Better now. Better now. Yeah. Best place in the house. Yeah, That's right. Your mind behind this room and the reason you guys get the quality product that you do. Over here is Sarah. She is pre-assembling some trucks and frames for us. She usually works out with the warehouse and Joe, but she's helping us out today because she's that great. North Carolina production started in 2015 when this room started to come into fruition. The first cars started to come off of the line in 2016. Now, prior to that, we did have another U.S. manufacturer. It was just right up the road in Virginia. They did all of our 6464 boxcars at the time that were in the States, as well as helped launch, us per, uh, launch a very successful personalized program, which I will get into with you guys in a little bit. When you walked in, you saw these two beautiful machines. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful machines. Fun fact for you guys, they have nicknames. Does anybody know what their nicknames are? <laughs> no. No? We gotta read the paper, guys. Oh, hold on. Read it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you. It's, oh. it's Bert and Ernie, everybody. Bert and Ernie, okay. Bert and Ernie. Bert so our creative and director, Ernie. Ted Jones, um, was an inaugural part of helping get this room started back in 2015-ish. He was a huge Sesame Street fan, so he nicknamed them Bert and Ernie, and it just kind of stuck from there on out. Now, a fun fact, and I thought about this yesterday when I was talking to a tour group and talking about the nicknames, is it actually works out because Bert is taller than Ernie. <laughs> so now I have that comparison as well. We currently average about 109 cars each day in production with a full production run going. Wow. We can print up to six cars at a time. Our fixture fits six box cars at a time. I'm going to do my show and tell, which isn't nearly as exciting as engineering show and tell because there's not like big trains or technology. But this right here is my show and tell. This is a 6464 boxcar fixture. So our boxcars get placed in their slots in the fixture before they go into print. Then we place it on the flatbread. Flatbread, I'm hungry, it's almost lunchtime. On the flatbed, and we make sure it's secured in tightly because if it's not secured in tightly, it's going to shake and go back and forth like that. What happens if it shakes and goes back and forth? Overspray. Blurry, that is correct. And if that were to miss QC and get out into the public and you guys were to get it, you know you're going to be calling customer service, not happy, wanting a return and wanting a new one. So we make sure that everything is screwed down tightly and that it is QC before it goes out the door to you guys. In addition to our six car fixture, we also print our doors separately. Our box car door fixture fits 24 doors at a time. So we always print the doors first before we print the sides of the box car. This way when they come off of the production line and the sides are printed, we can head straight to assembly for frames and trucks and doors, then right into the packaging and then packed out and into the warehouse so it can ship out to all the customers like you guys. The sides of the box car and the doors take about 10 to 12 minutes per side to print. 
Then you flip the boxcar doors, you press again for 10 to 12 minutes, and then it is ready to go. A fun feature that we do have with the USA production items is that we do do group print. Group print has become increasingly popular mm -hmm. throughout the years, especially on the custom and the club side of things. Clubs love to put their logo on top or some kind of markings on top. Or in the LCCA's case, they always do a great job on their Christmas box car by getting images that are great quality and very vibrant and then putting something on the roof to just make it stand out a little bit more. And from there, other clubs have started to do the same. So we go about 12,000 units per year out the door, and that is broken across a number of lines. That is our catalog items, which is somewhere between, depending on the year, between catalogs, between eight and probably 12 USA catalog SKUs. And then we also do custom and club projects as well um, that clubs order through us as well. And then our personalized program. Our personalized program has grown year after year after year and we continue to do more offerings. So let me ask you guys a question. Anybody buy a personalized box car before? Yeah, so you guys know. It's a really good opportunity to do a one-off, literally very personalized with just a photo and three lines of text on the box car and it will ship in probably two to three weeks. Um, we'll come to you guys. So we do everything from birthdays and Christmas and Father's and Mother's Days and anniversaries and we just started offering a retirement box car. Um, it's very, everyone's like, hey, there's no retirement. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's, and Ryan's team, Ryan Corey's uh, project manager, you guys will meet her in a little bit. She was like, I'm gonna jump on this and, and got the retirement going. So that is up and available. Just great gifts to give to people year in and year out. They also collect them because we change the decoration on like Christmas and birthday, anniversary, year in and year out, and then we update the date as well. So like if you have a family photo from Christmas in 2021 and then family photo Christmas 2022 and so forth and so forth, and then people just keep continuing to buy them and add them on to their plans. Wedding cards? Wedding cards, we do. We have an anniversary, um, and then we have, that might be our only one. But that's a, that's a wedding car, but not congratulations. No, no, just the wedding, the picture of the wedding. Oh, oh no, it's just on the anniversary box. Mind blown? Yes. Oh. I know, they're pretty cool. We can't call them that with the feelings, but this is a newer printer, um, so it's a little bit more high tech. Yeah. But they basically, I mean, they function a lot in the same way. It's like printing on like a paper. It's like a printer. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's awesome. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. That's, that's really, really impressive. Yeah. Not box cars. There's box cars out there. Yeah, box cars out there. Welcome to the Creative Services Department. My name's Steve Davis. I've worked for Lionel for 28 years now. I started in 96 when Dick Kuhn just sold it to Wellsprings and Neil Young. So um, the 11 artists that work on everything are out here. Oddly enough, the oldest ones are in the back, closest to Howard's office and HR. The younger ones are up here. Um, we listen at the back to music like the Beach Boys on our headphones. Up here they listen to something that sounds like cats in a blender. <laughs> um, but this department handles all the visual and video stuff for the company. So we're the ones that set the look on, if you look at the billboard down there at the end, what the new store is going to look like. Oh, wow. We also take care of all the Facebook and Twitter images and stuff that you'll see. Um, that rack over there has a bunch of the old catalogs on it. Well, catalogs that are new and the old ones, so you can see how things this are evolved. We used to do all our catalogs in a horizontal format, which works really good for trains, not necessarily so good for putting on a coffee table, so now everything stands up. I'm sure sooner or later when I'm gone, it will go back to the flat and okay. somebody will go, hey, here's a good idea. <laughs> um, we also take care of all the USA trains. The artwork's done here. Um, any of the personalized ones. We do the original art that's on the boxcar and then you send us the photo and that gets added on. In fact, you're going to find out how that process works today. You guys already went through Lauren's part of the tour. You'll meet the photographer over here. When I started working in 96, he was just a glint in his dad's eye. 
So wow. I've worked here longer than he's been in the world. Um, <laughs> if anybody has ordered the train of the year right here, We have problems with when you try to print something, you can only show so much, you can word describe it. This is how it's gonna be painted. So when the light hits it, it's gonna change color. Oh. China got a hold of us and said, hey, you know, we can do this. Do you think you guys can use it at all? You know, they were kind of like, mm. Ryan said, oh yeah, we can use it. So that's what that locomotive is gonna look like. If you've ordered one or thinking about ordering one, I would do quick. Is it still open, the orders for that? I'm not sure if the retail store has any left on their list or not, or if they, they do have, we may have one or two that we ordered extra just in case, because uh, I knew once people saw it, they'd go, oh, that's what that means. <laughs> uh, but, uh, they won't go, they won't go, they won't stay long if there are. So you get creative people like we see here, and then you have Lionel, where Ryan gives us a project, and gosh darn it, it's not another black locomotive with a smoke box on the front. Kind of like Pensy Green, which is black with a dot of green in the bucket. Um, there's not a lot that we can do with this. But what we do love is when we get creative and who's going on the train trip Friday? Here's the locomotive that came from China. Now, oh, wow. when they got in touch with us, not China, but the, the railroad, they said, you know, Ryan talked to him about creating this. So... They said, yeah, sure, that sounds like a good idea. So our artist said, what color is that? Well, <laughs> the railroad shop said it's raspberry metallic and daisy yellow. Oh, my gosh. Now, if you know anything about art much at all, anything that's printed like or anything. There's four different colors of raspberry. Exactly. And here's what, a, here's what a Pantone color looks like. This one right here is Pantone Red 201C. Everywhere in the world, somebody will know pretty much what that color is because it's a standardized color. So they said, well, it's raspberry metallic and daisy yellow. So we said, well, we've got to have a paint ship that we can send China to have them match it. They sent him two pieces of steel about that big <laughs> that they painted in the engine shop wow. with the raspberry and the yellow. Ryan sent them to China, and this is what we get back. Then this goes to the engine house and we say, you know, does this match what you, so once we get this color nailed down, every one of the Aberdeen cars we do after that time, China will always match this original color. So when you decide, well, you know, I think I want that other car to add to the two I've already got, they're gonna match as much as humanly possible. Now, when we do, last year, we actually put 24,000 hours into the catalogs and all the visual stuff. The catalog is a six month process for just one catalog. Because we hand it off, to, they hand it off to us, artist starts laying it out, the rest of the artists that aren't working on the catalog are working on the virtual images. Just so you know, this stuff doesn't exist when it's in the catalog because nobody's painted it yet, nobody's shipped it to us yet. So we do what we call virtual art. Virtual art is if we don't have something, because I mean, this stuff's expensive, so we don't keep a whole bunch of blank locomotives around. So we start with something like this. We then get rid of all the decoration that's on it in Photoshop and turn it into that. Then we can add anything to it we want to and change any color. This is kind of an extensive process, but because we use the same locomotives over or boxcars over and over again, when you put 100 hours into this, the next time you do 10 locomotives, now you put less hours in each one because all you do is change the color. It's the same thing you see here. That's the file that's gonna go to China. Mm -hmm. Those are all the Pantone colors here, and then they're up here pointing at where they're gonna be on the locomotive. All the decoration as far as the warning labels and everything are here. All their colors are called out, and then where they are are pointed out with numbers. And if, say, the checkerboard here doesn't line up with the checkerboard here, China will send it back to us. They'll say, this isn't right, you've gotta change either this view or this view. 
because they don't want to have it come back to us and we say, well, that's not right. You guys have to repaint them again. Mm -hmm. So they'll ping us and tell us to make sure we get it right first. That's a virtual image. We were lucky enough to actually have an unpainted SD70 ACE in black, but we turned it to this. And then anytime we do like the Space Force or even a, reg a real locomotive, we can use the same piece of art. If something changes like a different air conditioner or a different set of antennas up there, we'll have to actually create an illustration and add that onto here. So we've got a library of bits and pieces, five chime horns, four chime horns, three chime horns, whatever is on anything. But there's only really in the art department two of us that were trained nerds. I came from Kallenbach Publishing where they used to do, or they still do trains and model railroader and stuff. Sarah has been a collector of train stuff all her life. So when Ryan goes, we send the catalog over there and everybody's worked on it and the images will come back and the catalog will say, add smoke. Well, if you do a steam engine, it's pretty obvious where the smoke's gonna come out. <laughs> If you do a diesel, not so much because is it the four little nubs that are there? Is it the one big thing that looks like a chimney? You know, and then in the steam engine, we've started doing whistle steam. Blowdown steam. Depend on, yeah, where's the blowdown steam come from? Where's the whistle steam come from? Now we're also pop doing pop-off valves and everything else. So, you know, they'll come over to Sarah, they'll come over to me and they'll go, where's the smoke go? <laughs> so it's like, it's over here. <laughs> They're learning. It's odd how much that stuff seeps in, even though you know you don't know what's going on. Oh, we do some of the printing here, but in terms of true like injection molding and stuff like that, we don't really do anything anymore here. Yeah. It's wow. just—it's to be honest with you, it's—it's it's a lost art, and it's, a, it's Howard's kind of office. Lost art, uh, a lot of EPA stuff around. And like look what they have. Hi. In the case. Yeah. It's actually a very nice example. What was that a favorite part for you? Well, the way. I'm not going to lie, this, uh, for those who saw my office when I was a company commander, they might say that this office looks very similar to mine because I had trains and toys and a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> There's the man right there. And what they're doing is that you get to be the CEO for a day or for five seconds, but then you get your picture printed on a really cool box car. Way back. 15 years of service. Wow. Awesome. Coming out. Hopefully you uh, really enjoyed the tour. Got to meet some folks. Got to understand a little bit behind the scenes here what goes on. Um, encourage you to go to the, the seminar if you can. Yes. Um, yeah, there, we'll get to hear from a lot of uh, a lot of folks on stage, and you'll get some insights into what's going on. But look forward to seeing everybody through the rest of the week. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Thank, Thank you so much, you. sir. Thank you.